Hi guys, this is Jane All right behind the camera. I'm the president of the International Wizard of Oz Club, and my club membership has, among other things, really helped me amass quite an Oz collection. So I was looking forward to sharing a little bit of a look around my Oz room and to tell you about some of my favorite things. I've bought a lot of things in auctions, like these beautiful stained glass plates that were made by Century Studio years ago. I have others of their plates that I bought directly from um, Century Studio in Minneapolis. This 1939 case is where I have pretty much all of the merchandise that I own that had anything to do with the release of the film or that um, is particularly precious to me these days. The string heads have been slow growing. I'm still looking for the Toto head. I used to think that if I could just have one of these beautiful little Dorothy Ideal dolls, it would just be the end of the rainbow for me. And now I've found four of this size and three of another, although I only have one scarecrow. The little soap figures I really love. I have one little hanger tucked in there, a couple scarves, a few of the seal test glasses, and both the uh, sweepers from Bissell. There are games in the back and in the very back corner, the little rubber Tin Man figure that was that came out in 1939. But that's um, a case that most people coming to the Oz room are particularly eager to see. My Winky was from uh, the Macy's Herald Square display in 1989. Over here I have two of my favorite dolls. They're scarecrow dolls from about 1920, made by the Oz Toy, Toy Manufacturing Company, Frank J. Baum's company. Um, they were never pictured in advertisements, but they were described as the larger 20-inch scarecrow in text. Um, over here, I'm walking in the direction where I keep mostly dolls, toys, and games, but let me stop and show you this wonderful Patchwork Girl doll. She is made from antique silk quilts and with her are my larger Dorothys. I will say that some of my Dorothy dolls have had to have a spa day to be looking their best. I keep all the dolls and toys and games and things that were meant to be played with and enjoyed in this corner of my Oz room, as well as more stained glass. I have some posters. You may notice since this is the third floor of my house, I don't have flat walls, so I don't have a lot of wall space. My ruby slippers are tucked down there. If you saw Tiffany Sutton earlier, you know how likely it is that Oz fans have shoes that will fit them for their various events. Oh, and when I did my little backwards tour, I showed this fun pair of shoes. They're beaded with the Emerald City on the toe, a rainbow, and then a little yellow brick road wrapped around the back of the heel. Really a fun piece. Um, here in my dolls and toys areas, this is just a towering column of games for the most part. Uh, behind them, I have all sorts of things, including the Mega Play sets. Um, there's some Duncan Munchkin things in there. The peanut butter. If you're a fan of Swift's Oz peanut spread, Bill Beam and I, a year ago on the Oz Club's official YouTube channel, did a videotape about those particular products. And a couple of my favorite dolls are Dorothy and Socrates the Scarecrow from the Tales of the Wizard cartoon. I dream of the day. I find dandelion. These Tuscany figures are particularly meaningful to me. Bill Eubank, see that little bumblebee figurine, figure rather, on the base? Bill Eubank hand painted this set. That was his mark. And years after buying this set, I was able to get a Toto who, much to my delight, has the same Bill Beam, or I'm sorry, Bill Eubank uh, bumblebee on the base, so I know he was made for them. Oh, and let me back up and show you this great dresser. Those of you who knew Fred Meyer, his niece, Pat Catherine Petrasco, made this out of an old Oz poster. And yes, those drawers are full of Wizard of Oz t-shirts. Um, this is the third floor of my house. I kind of arranged the corners into various rooms. Right in the middle, I have my best Wizard of Oz and Bomb books. Um, when someone is here who is a book collector, I tend to show them a signed Queen Zixia Vix by the Candelabra's Glare that are both in little bookcases in there. And one of my great stories, um, that short, that Scarecrow in the dust jacket, that's my only first edition Oz book in its dust jacket. I got it at an estate sale for just a few hundred dollars 
after seeing it online for several thousand. Uh, my Oz books are in this case. Obviously, I have multiple copies of some of them. Over here, I have other books written by L. Frank Baum under his name or any of his pseudonyms. The Rick Wisecarver cookie jar is one of my favorites. Then, and I keep reference books along the bottom, Carol Carlson's Oz dolls. Uh, over here, I have a case that's largely things by Ruth Plumley Thompson or John R. Neal. Um, Denslow materials start up there and pour over to the case beside it. I have two pieces of original artwork that are right in this area. This scarecrow, Denslow drew him for the house that Jack built, but it's clearly his Oz scarecrow. So I'm thrilled to have that piece. And over here, across from the flag, try to get out of the glare, is a beautiful illustration John O'Neill did for the Wonder City of Oz. So that's sort of my little library corner, if you will. Um, a house from the Muppet Wizard of Oz, a little Munchkin house, is tucked back into that corner that was used on screen. Wonderful Rinkatink doll was handmade. And um, I have two of these lamps. This particular one had been a gift from Willard Carroll, oh gosh, 20, 25 years ago. Um, I'm now across from the back side of my desk, so I'm going to see if I can't work around there without blinding you by the lights. Oh, here are a couple wizards that are worth showing you. The one on the left is the Hotter and Stoughton uh, first British edition, the first state of the second edition with new on the cover, and my only second edition that has a dust jacket. W Ryan had asked me to pull out some wicked things, so I did. This pair of silver shoes were sold through one of the Broadway flea markets. The figurine of the wizard head, that was the commemorative gift given to cast and crew members on opening night. And this signed copy of the Grimmery, I had asked Gregory McGuire if he would sign a copy for a fundraising auction I wanted to contribute it to. And then when he saw what he did, I had to buy it myself. <laughs> so I bought it twice. Um, this case is all material that was not MGM, like pre-MGM pieces from the publishers. Um, wonderful stories, both those jigsaw puzzles and the wonderful Land of Oz library. I only have because when I heard about them, people in the area where they were for sale were willing to go buy them for me when I couldn't get that far across country myself that fast. Behind my desk, I have everything from Justin Schiller's original letter uh, inviting people to join the Oz Club to a few of the little Return to Oz pieces that aren't over with my international collection, white editions, some wonderful ephemera from selling the white editions, a couple of little Dorothy of Oz pieces. Um, love the Stengel plate. I have the Cowardly Lion Bowl too, but I've yet to find the Scarecrow mug. And here's a whole shelf of the Bomb Bugle, which is the Oz Club's publication. This wonderful Tin Man was from an exhibit I did back in 89. At this point, I think I've done something over 30 exhibits. I remember the last time I added them up, I quit counting at 30. And another piece I'd really wanted to show but was hard to do online. This white Tin Man, he's a prototype, and his companion Scarecrow is right there. They were prototypes of figurines that were never produced. They would have been painted like so. Really, really thrilled to have prototypes. And then these figurines down here are also quite scarce. Um, they're made by the Goebel Company. The last corner of my Oz room, which I'll show you quickly, Sorry about the back of the chair. My international collection fills space right here. And I recently spent more than an hour sharing back and forth with Mikey D about that for an Oz Club event. So if you are interested in international material, go listen to us jabber for an hour on the Oz Club's channel. Um, snowboard of the Tin Man down there. Uh, this children's stroller with Oz artwork all over it is something that I actually found in Japan and paid to bring here. The very last thing I'll show you today is the anniversary of when the Queer Visitors from the Marvelous Land of Oz comic panels, comic pages began. And I have these huge uh, three ring 
I'm sorry, not three ring. I have these huge scrapbooks that hold entire newspaper pages. So it's in here. I love this one because it's from Kansas City. The Wogglebug's Thanksgiving Dinner. Another favorite is this one where the Oz characters go visit Santa's workshop. And this album, my second one, this corner, by the way, is not nearly as picked up as the rest of the room was. Um, when I have something like this great ad for the Wizard of Oz in 1902, the whole top of the page doesn't have anything interesting on it. So I use a plastic overlay to put smaller pieces to make the whole presentation. And then also in this volume, towards the back, I have a couple of Dinslow's uh, Scarecrow and Tin Man pages. Especially love the Dorothy's Christmas tree. One of the first stories I ever wrote was my own take of a Dorothy's Christmas tree. And this one of Father Goose at the seashore celebrating the first book that um, Dinslow and Baum collaborated on, Father Goose, his book. So that is, I think, everything I'd hoped to show in particular. Let me throw in this darling little figurine that Fern Formica made. That particular one had been in Margaret Pellegrini's collection, and I was delighted to be able to get that once her estate sales began. That's my Oz room. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry I wasn't able to do it while we were all live, but there was uh, a problem I had flipping the camera around, and I didn't want to waste your time as I had technical difficulties. Hope you enjoy. And if you're not a member of the Oz Club, join everything in here. I could be telling you, oh yeah, Bill Campbell made the, the corn cob um, centerpiece. That was a present from Ryan Jay. Nearly everything. Uh, David Dykitz, who talked me into buying that Glinda doll. All of these pieces have stories behind them, and invariably they are from collectors who made it possible for me to own them. And most of those collectors I met through the International Wizard of Oz Club. It's been a joy for me to be a part of it for 50 years, and I would love to have you with us. Talk to you soon. Thanks.